the ATC SCM50 speakers with the ATC P2 power amplifier. I think I would buy them for their treble delivery alone. I also think I would buy them for their mid-range delivery alone, but the bass, I also think I would buy them for their bass delivery alone. <laughs> ATC, what have you done to me? Welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. Full disclosure, ATC sent me the SCM50 speakers and P2 power amplifier for this review, but they've had absolutely no input into the video or into the review. And they sent them to me to start to look at a very interesting, hotly debated audio file topic. Now I have been interested for years to know whether studio speakers sound better than home hi-fi speakers. And ATC are a pretty famous UK-based manufacturer of both studio speakers and electronics and home hi-fi speakers and electronics. When you get up to this level of speaker from ATC, then you seem to get pretty much the same speaker for the studio as you do for the home, or well, at least on the surface of it anyway. Given that is the case, it actually made more sense to look at the difference between a passive SCM50 and an active SCM50. Really looking at the difference between passive speakers and active speakers. And I thought this could be very interesting to a lot of different audio files. I was totally thrilled that ATC offered to send me their SCM50 speakers to review because that is a legendary speaker in its own right. Again, both from studio and home based use. But when I looked at the specification for them and I saw that they <laughs> recommend a power amplifier rating of between 100 and 1500 watts, I didn't think I would have an amplifier to do them full justice. ATC said they would send me the P2 power amplifier to use with them for this review. And I also think that made you know perfect sense because if I'm going to be comparing an active ATC SCM50 with a passive one, then technically I should be listening to ATC amplification for both. And I'm really glad that they did because a lot of what I've been hearing and really liking, and I do mean really liking, about the SCM50 speakers is definitely the SCM50 Plus, the P2 power amplifier. I'm not really the kind of audiophile that, you know, goes much into system synergies. You know, you must use this amplifier with this speakers. As an audiophile, I've always thought, you know, give me a good speaker, give me a good amplifier, and I'll, you know, put myself in the middle and get the two to work together. But after spending time with the SCM50 and the P2, maybe I'm starting to come around to the idea that there is such a thing as synergies or, you know, components working really nicely together. I did some testing and comparisons between the ATC P2 power amplifier and the Cord Electronics Etude stereo power amplifier that I had here. And the ATC SCM50 speakers sounded really quite different off of the P2 power amplifier compared to the Cord Etude. And subjectively, some things maybe could sound better on the Etude. And the Etude is you know, a much physically smaller amplifier than the ATC, and it definitely had enough minerals to drive the SCM50 speakers, but it just presented a very different sound. And I think really the P2 and the SCM50 as a combined pair was definitely what I was really, really liking and enjoying about the sound. That's important for two reasons. One we'll look at at the end of the review, but I suppose the main one and the most important one is when we get to talking about sound quality, I am definitely 100% talking about the speakers and the P2 amplifier and not just the speakers on their own. There is no getting away from the form factor of the SCM50 speakers. They are pretty much a rectangular box that sits itself on top of a pretty standard metal frame stand. Even though that is the case, 
I still think they stand out. They still look unique as a speaker system. And you can tell that it's an ATC speaker system just from a first glance. And I'm also really starting to come around to this form factor. Earlier in the year, I reviewed the Wharfdale Linton Heritage speakers. And you know what? I really liked that form factor. There's some things about it that definitely are appealing to me now. And I didn't think I would go for this type of speaker system, but the more I spend time with it, the more it's growing on me. But one thing that definitely didn't grow on me for this review was moving the SCM50 speakers around because they are bloody heavy. And that weight doesn't seem to come from a crazy, inert, heavyweight cabinet like we might see on something like a Wilson Audio speaker or a maybe a Fink Team Borg speaker. Because when you, you know, knuckle tap, tap test the side of the ATC speakers, they just don't sound as completely dead and inert as maybe the Wilsons or the Borgs. So that must mean that all this weight is coming from, mostly anyway, the speaker drivers and maybe the crossover components. And ATC are one of a very small number of speaker manufacturers that make all their own speaker drivers in-house. And I think that is very praiseworthy. The standout speaker driver in the SCM50 is probably that 75 millimeter soft dome mid-range driver because we just don't see that type of speaker driver used from many speakers from many different manufacturers. And I can only think of a couple. I can think of ATC, I can think of PMC, and then more recently, Wharfdale. But besides those three, ATC gave me some great advice for setting the speakers up. They suggested that I put them and the listening position in as close to an equilateral triangle as possible. They suggested that I, you know, tow the speakers in to pass at just behind the listening position. So quite towed in, you know, sitting quite on axis with the speakers. But the big bit of advice they gave me was to set the speaker stands with a shorter rear spike and a longer front spike so that the speakers sit at a slight angle. When they sit on their stands, they do sit actually quite low. And that slight angle, that slight tilt helped them to create a bigger, more expensive overall sound stage and actually help just to tie their whole sound together. Because the SCM50 are so heavy and because ATC had installed like a, what I can only describe as like a rubber gasket on top of the speaker stands. When you put the heavy speaker onto the stand with this gasket in between, the speakers kind of grip and they kind of hug the speaker stands, which makes perfect sense because the speakers are not going to move and it means the speaker kind of forms one or forms as one with the speaker stands. That all makes perfect sense. But one of the great things about stand mount speakers or bookshelf speakers is your ability to move them ever so slightly to get the most of what I call a dialed in sound, where the sound is even across the sound stage, solid in the center, but everything snaps into focus. So that was much more difficult with the SCM50s than say the Wharfdale Linton Heritage. And I listened to them a lot set up like this, and I even used them to review several other hi-fi components. But it wasn't until I you know, fully set them up and dialed them in with a custom direct live calibration that I felt like I really got to hear what this speaker system and an amplifier can do. And when we look at the in-room frequency response from them, then maybe you can see why that was. You know, I was very, very careful using direct live to not upset the way the SCM50s were naturally sounding in the room. I concentrated more on trying to undo the negatives from the lower mid-range and into the bass. And as you can see, with the room gain that I naturally get in my room, the SCM50s were giving me what I would call a very full range, equal loudness type of sound. So bass down to 30 hertz and below. And regulars to the channel will know how much importance I put on getting bass just right and factoring in the importance of equal loudness. I've made a whole video about this before and I'll link it up there for you. For sound quality, remember we are talking about the speakers and the P2 amplifier here and I'm sure 
most of you are probably thinking that the mid-range from that 75 millimeter soft dome would be the star of the show here. I actually think the treble and the treble balance is the real star of the show here because it's the balance of the treble. It's sh sharp and crisp and detailed, but still sweet and smooth and never ever edgy or glary, but it's always present, always there and always detailed. And you can see from the in-room measurements that the treble from the SCM 50s is nicely extended, but not exaggerated in any way. And yet, when you listen to the speakers and the amplifier, that treble is present, always present, always clear. And sometimes it catches you out with just little bits of kind of treble delicacy and treble intricacy and treble detail that just pops itself out in free air. And in the main, in the most part, it's a treble that is free of the speakers. Yeah, it's precise, yeah, it's accurate, and yeah, it's it's detailed and it's full of energy, but it's not, it doesn't quite have the same effortlessness sound as maybe the treble from an AMT tweeter. But I think most audiophiles would quickly forgive it for everything else that it does really, really well. Again, crispness and sharpness, but also sweetness, bags and bags of detail. I really, really, really liked the treble from this pairing. With how I had the SCM50 set up in the room, obviously this ATC pairing was delivering a bass that was big, full, solid, with excellent timing. But most impressive was the flow, the smoothness of the bass, and the flow of it, like a water-like flow. And I actually listened to a lot of different dance music with this speaker amplifier pairing in the system than I normally would as part of a review, and that's because the bass from the speakers was just making me feel nostalgic. It was reminding me of being you know, a younger man out at nightclubs, listening to dance music, played off of vinyl, and with the big PA systems that just give you a like a warm, warm, this warmth, this cuddly type of bass. And yeah, the SCM 50s and the ATC P2 power amplifier combo was just, you know, giving me something like that kind of you know, deep, warm, cuddly, you know, a cuddly type of bass. And it was just with this lovely kind of rhythmic flow to it. <laughs> really, really interesting and, and fun to listen to music like that. But what was really impressive, I would then change the music completely to maybe some jazz or something completely different. And then the bass would become tight, really tight and you know, instrumental and I suppose tactile. And then you'd put on some music with some big kicking drums and <laughs> this combo really does kick really nice. And drums sound absolutely fantastic. You know, it was a tight and precise bass, and but not a bass that sounds tight and precise like this. A bass that sounds tight and precise, but more like this. And I can only put that down to maybe the larger driver, the nine inch driver that ATC have used compared to the two six inch drivers in the Kef Reference 3. I think both of these speakers deliver fantastic bass quality and the Kefs definitely do. It's one of the reasons why I like them so much. Comparing the two, maybe the Kefs are a bit more like this and the ATC would be a bit more like this in the way they deliver the bass. Both very, very good. Onto the mid-range and vocal delivery. Other speakers that I've reviewed, and maybe even my own Kef Reference 3 speakers, can deliver a vocal and a mid-range that sounds tighter, that sounds tighter depending on what, obviously, what system you're using with those speakers. But over a longer listen, slightly more relaxed mid-range from the ATCs, maybe to some audiophiles will sound natural, more natural even, because it's a bit more relaxed, it's a bit more easy going, and that way it can sound a bit more expressive and a bit more free and quite a bit less speaker-like. Now I was wanting for no more from this ATC combination for any of the male or female vocals for any of the music that I was listening to. I was totally satisfied with all of it. Sound staging is another interesting area, I think, because they do sound more monitor in style than a lot of other different speakers. I think other speakers that I've reviewed have tried to create maybe a larger, more expansive 
soundstage where this ATC combo is more, maybe more honest. This is here, that is there, this is here, and that is there. But what I did really like with this ATC combo was the always sense of space in the center of the soundstage. And what I mean by that was, it didn't matter what music I played at what volume or how complex that music would get, this speaker and amplifier combo would never, what I would call compress or harden or start to, what I'm gonna use the words thicken, it always stayed relaxed, composed, and again, that water-like smoothness for literally everything, bass, mid-range, and treble, which means that it always feels like there's space between you and, and the speakers. It never feels kind of hardened or compressed on you, which does definitely make a difference for longer listening sessions, especially at louder volumes. But what about negatives? For sound and sound quality, I genuinely can't think of any. That doesn't mean this is gonna be the perfect setup for every audio file, of course not. But for me, what I look for, what I like, how I have things set up, what my expectations are, I genuinely can't think of any negatives for sound quality at all. I did notice that you know, this, maybe the speakers or the amplifier or both seem to sound better the more you turn them up. Yes, they sound fine at lower volumes, but maybe a little bit less special at lower volumes. I think the form factor of the SCM50 speakers is not going to be for everyone, and you can definitely buy much prettier looking speakers at this kind of money. For my final thoughts of the ATC SCM50 speakers with the ATC P2 power amplifier. If I looked at this as a home demo period, as opposed to a review period, then I think I would be looking to buy these speakers and this power amplifier because they have made a really, really big impression on me. And I do think that everything I've said positive about them for how they sound for music would be just as positive about how they would sound for a home cinema setup. And I actually think with one of the center speakers, some of the on-wall surround speakers that ATC make and the four rail Predator subwoofers that I already have in my room that would make for some serious kick-ass home cinema system. Looking back to how I started this review, talking about the importance of, you know, the matching here, the pairing here between these speakers and this amplifier, I think there's something important to stress there is that you don't need to buy the speakers with the amplifier or obviously vice versa. If you're interested in the speakers, then I think it definitely makes sense when you go to hear them to start that demonstration process with the ATC power amplifier. Because, you know, I do think, you know, I'm not a massive believer in it, but I do think there is definitely a synergy here. And if I had to break the two of these two down, I would say the speakers are the characterless part of the setup and the amplifier is the part that's adding the character. And when you put the two together, it works. It really, really works. I think the ATC P2 power amplifier is offering a lot for its price tag and it even comes in at a few hundred pounds less than the Cord Etude power amplifier. And in this situation with these speakers, for me, I think it works better. And that's where things get really, really interesting because ATC are going to come and they're going to convert this exact pair of SCM50 speakers from passive to active. And that means each speaker will get three individual amplifiers, one for the treble, one for the mid-range, and one for the bass. And obviously the passive crossovers will make way for active crossovers. And it's going to be really, really interesting to hear what differences that makes and what, I suppose, changes to how the speaker sound that makes and whether it's better or worse, whether I prefer it or not. So that is going to be all coming in a future review and a future video. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button and obviously subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. I'm sure you have. I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.